Hello. Hello. Good day. Hello. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, first thing to do organizationally, take your mobile phones, computers, whatever, any device that didn't have full internet connectivity yesterday, but has today, and go to this address. www. Ours, audience response system, doubles.org. Um, in the meantime, I want to welcome all students following us over YouTube from Unique program. And uh, I'm so excited that for the first time we have the course that goes into international exchange. So whoever pleases, so all over the world can use, or at least in Europe, but also all over the world can actually take part in this course. Uh, once you get to this address, uh, our international followers uh, from abroad in the UNIQ program, please also do the same thing. You will get points, you will be graded by answers you give through this system. So www.aures.org, AURES, audience response system, then you will get a black screen with two symbols, one is symbolizing mouth, and the other one, the, the right one, is symbolizing ear. You are th those who are listening, uh, and you are supposed to press on the ear, and then there will be a question uh, or white box where you enter the room number, which is 6804 today. Press start, and you should get uh, some buttons, colored buttons, labeled A, B, C, D, E, and a white uh, rectangle where you can write your questions, answers, whatever. Uh, for students here, uh, please write your student identification code in the white box and send it. And for international abroad students, just enter your name or whatever you have so that we can identify your answers later. Um, in the room, anybody has problems? Who did not log into ours? Who did? You know, one thing that you have to learn as a lecturer is when you ask something that the answer is yes and people raise hands, it doesn't mean that the rest has the answer no. You have to ask both because there are many people who are confused, indecisive, or simply don't want to give their answer. So you have to ask both yes and no. Okay, if this is completed, let's see. Uh, Um, we are getting only a few of your ID codes. Okay. Now, 
This course is called Communication Skills with a Subscript in Engineering. Well, there's nothing specific in engineering except that communication skills is a huge and broad area. Effectively, exchanging information between two human beings is a complex matter. We learn to talk when we are kids. We talk all the time, we listen all the time in multiple languages, and we believe that we understand each other, which is as wrong as it can be. Usually, we don't understand each other. Why? Because we don't communicate efficiently. So we, we gave this subscript uh, communication skills in engineering because we made a selection of topics which are the most pressing and urgent for engineering students. Uh, there are many other very exciting and interesting topics, but um, we don't have enough time. You don't have enough time. I do. I can talk days and nights about it. For I me, mean, it's very exciting. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Who's going to be talking to you? It's me, my name is Predrag Pale, and my colleague, Dr. Yudel Petrovic. We will be giving lectures and doing the stuff. Most of the time I'll be talking, and most of the time you will be communicating with URI over email and other things. Um, and we'll be doing this course. URI will also do some lectures. Uh, but also we invited few alumni, few students that already graduated from this school, uh, three, five, seven, some of them nine years ago, uh, to tell you what they think. So these are your fellow students, a little bit older than you. What they think about communication skills course and communication skills in general for engineers. And throughout the course, we'll give you their either videos or texts that will somehow try to explain you various topics that we try to teach you. Um, from Zurich, our Brussels, Amsterdam, freelancing somewhere, Amazon uh, in, um, investment organization, Price Waterhouse Coopers, Uber, people work in very respect responsible, uh, respectable organizations, and they will tell you what they think about. Um, before coming to the lecture, please take time to do your all psychological needs, visit the bathroom, eat, drink, talk to your friends, visit your social sites, do whatever you need. Move here, um, disable the cell phone ringtone because we will be using cell phones. Connect to ours automatically next time, don't wait me for, to call you in. You will have always the room number on the board. and. Uh, Try to think about the lecture that is coming. Because if you're not thinking about the lecture that, that is coming right now, <coughs> it will hit you like a truck. There will be a lot of information, you will be lost, you will be thinking about other things. The 50 minutes academic quarter is intended for you to do all this physical stuff, but also psychologically to start thinking about the course that is coming in front of you. I'll explain a little bit later. For that purpose, we also have um, some preparatory assignments for you that you have to do before the lecture at home that actually puts you in a mood so it's easier when you come in front of a lecture it's five minutes before the lecture just remember what you've been doing at home and you'll be ready to get the full speed of the lecture unlike many other courses and places we encourage using of the cell phones because we want you to interact with us it is quicker it's simpler. Many things can be done anonymously, so it encourages you to say what you think. If I'm gone with a lecture and you still have some remark to something that was before, you still can write it and we'll read it now or later. You can always write in the white, white rectangle on your phone, uh, read, uh, regardless if you have a question or a comment or whatever. Of course, we encourage you to raise your hands, especially in a small group like this one. It's wonderful. It's like 40 people, two, four, mm -hmm. six, 8, 10, 13, 13, okay, I'm 14. Uh, so it's a nice, comfortable group. We can work together. Uh, please don't text, don't surf internet, not because of me, because you are showing disrespect to my effort to teach you something, 
that's that I leave to your consciousness and your well upbringing by your parents, but because you won't be able to uh, to grasp as much from the lecture as we expect you to, and we would like you to, and you would probably benefit from. Uh, <coughs> I always t I, I, I give a lot of lectures. I teach primary school teachers, high school teachers, university teachers. I teach um, judges, law enforcement. I teach parents, um, sometimes kids, um, librarians, NATO generals, um, doctors, managers, all sorts of people. And I always tell them two things. The second one will come in the next hour of our lecture. And the first thing is, Whenever you acquire information, ask information, or get information from someone, information, knowledge, or whatever, it is always important for you to think, who am I getting this information from? Who, oops, who are the information sources in the context of the information? If somebody tells you, uh, today is uh, 35 degrees centigrade, who is this person saying this? What's the credibility of this person? Did, do they have competence to say how much is it? Can they read a thermometer or a meteorologist? Or who are they? Can I trust them? How trustful, how valuable this information is depends on the competence of the source. Why do they do this? Why is he giving me this information? Why is he teaching me this? What's his motivation? What he wants to achieve? with giving me information or teaching me something. And in what context? Is it a lecture? Is it before the exam? Is it on exam? It, is it on the street? Is it um, uh, buying a lottery? Is it uh, inviting you to do a business with me? Why am I doing this? Why am I telling you what's the temperature or how to learn or how to communicate? Uh, if you read the book, try to find this information about the author. If you browse the web, Try to find this information about the author of the web content. If you're in a lecture, try to find out about the people who teach you. This is important. Because depending on my competence in my background is my view on the thing that I'll be teaching you about. It has to also to do something with models. Think of a bus. Are you going to get the same information, the same story from a mechanic whose duty is to repair the bus, or from the tourist operator agent whose job is to put as many people in the bus and get them as, as fast to some other place and earn as much money as possible. If they're talking about the bus, are you going to get the same information? What do you think? No. Probably not, because they have other interests, other background, other knowledge, other well. So that goes for every teaching as well. Therefore, now I have an excuse to speak about me at length. Uh, I graduated at this school. It was called the like, technical faculty at the time, many years ago, in a, in, a, in a direction called industrial electronics. I played with microcomputers when microprocessors, when they were not available. Only a few people had them in the town. When I was 16, I always wanted to do biomedical stuff. And my first company was, but it went broke because hospitals in this country didn't have money to pay for their equipment. Um, early on in 83, I started playing with Unix, which you know today as Linux. Uh, computer networks and security were things that, computer networks were things that I was playing with like 12, 12 years uh, while building internet and security I do even today. My passion is applying computer for whatever people like to do and need to do and that makes people happier, healthier and wiser, especially how people interact with computers. This again has something to do with psychology and um, my passion is using technology in education. And you will see this, the way we re record this lecture, make the captures, the way we use ORIS and other things and the way we do the, the, the compose the, the course is all um, because of my passion in education, and Yura is the one working with me on this, and we do some scientific research. 
I was doing in the uh, development R&D in, in industry. I'm teaching in the faculty too many years. Uh, I also started Creation Internet, founded Creation Academic Research Network, and I even spent seven years as Deputy Minister of Science, but that was in the last history, uh, century. In 20th century, um, these are things that I've been doing, just to break a little bit. Um, putting two processors on the same board and two operating systems. I've put Unix in, in a submarine so, so far ago. Um, me and my colleagues in my group designed all computer infrastructure in this building for five generations of the infrastructure. Um, the first thing, the first uh, point of sale terminal that you put your card in, in Croatia operating with my software. I started Carnet, founded Computer Emergency Response Team of Croatia, uh, et cetera, et cetera, whatever. Many things, many years. What I teach, uh, brand new course. Ah, uh, no, this, this course is jointly with my colleagues, uh, digital education. Communication skills for the past, this is the sixth year. Computer forensics, this is the seventh year. It happens on Friday. By the way, uh, before Corona, some uh, freshman students asked me if they could uh, listen to the co um, computer forensics course. And I said yes, because basically you don't need uh, other technical knowledge to understand this course other than uh, using computers, understanding file systems, understanding the computer has a memory and, and a network and communicates. So some people are coming and listening to this course. It's happening in this room on Friday at five o'clock in English, two, and two o'clock in Croatian. A uh, new course that is going to be next semester, uh, also for the 50 year students, um, is ambiental intelligence and assisted living. Uh, and these were my old courses that I was teaching before this change of program. Um, well, what is my experience? I'm an engineer. I'm a passionate engineer building things, designing things, uh, putting them in operation, deploying them. Um, I also write a lot of strategic documents and try to influence the policy. Um, I had this privilege to be in very excellent places in the world to learn things other than engineering like management, communication skills and other things. And um, I've been teaching, as I said, uh, many people in many, many areas. Uh, within all this, I also started to understand how important communication skills and management in general is. And this is how I um, came to teach this course because I was teaching people in the industry. <coughs> I realized that uh, the project that we design are great, except that uh, they don't succeed. Why? Because our customers didn't know how to manage the project. So I started learning about project management and then teaching them. Then they didn't know how to make a meeting, so I trained them how to do a meeting. Then they didn't know they had conflicts. So I trained them how to resolve conflicts, how to negotiate. And this is how I developed a lot of courses and then the management said, okay, why don't you do this course for our students as well. Um, okay, um, I want to introduce you to some projects that we work on, uh, you and me and our colleagues here at the faculty, that you can also have something to do with. Uh, active learning through imp improved interactivity, based on the experience with ours, we are building new tool and new methods, especially for high school teachers how to make lectures more interactive, not just listening like you are sitting now and listening to me. Soon will be time to answer something. So how to improve interactivity, we, have, we are building some software, creating some methods for high schools. If you want to participate, take part in this project, you're more than welcome, just write us a note. And um, it's an international project, several schools uh, from Europe are, uh, and you, EU is funding this project. Um, Another project that we do uh, here in Croatia is uh, media education is important. It's about media literacy. And I would very much like to have a very bright young person like you are. Someone who would like to work with me on a text or a document, reading a little bit what other people thought about it because I would like to make a very clear document explaining what is the difference between IT literacy, ability to competency to use technology fluently, what is 
the difference between information literacy. Uh, this is, you will have the, the whole lecture on this. You will be giving you how to find information, how to validate information, be sure that it's, it's okay. And also how to present your information in such a way that people understand you. This is information literacy. And then media literacy, which is what? What would you say, what is the media literacy? Hmm? Any ideas? The only wrong answer is silence. Like how to present the product itself. How to present? The product itself. How to present the product itself, yes. Especially whether to use one media or the other. What would be different media? What would be different media? Name me one media. TV. TV or video. The second is? Newspaper text, then mm, audio. audio, photograph, drawing. So when to use a photograph when drawing? When to use a series of pictures instead of video? When to use video instead of a series of pictures? When to use text over the picture? It's not the same. It's not a question of a fashion. Oh, today it's fashionable and everyone can do video. Or we'll do everything with video. No, it's not the most convenient way to transfer some information. So about media literacy, if somebody wants to work with me on this, uh, please just join in. And then third project that we are currently working on is science, uh, science technology, engineering, and math in the community. We do this with an um, NGO here in Croatia who has put a lot of robots in primary and secondary schools. And our students traditionally help them design new exercises, new assignments for students, and go there to work with pupils in primary and secondary schools and their teachers and teach them how to use those robots to do something educational. Um, we, do, uh, we do this also and create methodologies and pedagogy around it. Okay, what our past students, Eva Stoss, for example, said about uh, communication skills in general? Yes. Uh, well, she says, I have to admit that I entered the business world with a certain degree of fear that my engineering skills were insufficient for a job, especially in a foreign firm. And she was pushed forward and motivated for self-improvement. But she didn't doubt much in her communication skills. She had no reason to, because during the school in Croatia, she never had problems with it. I always had uh, A's, good marks. Uh, also, she had the communication skills which I didn't teach. It was some other uh, teachers that were teaching this before. And she thought she is competent. And she thought she would be successful. And she thought this was the only thing she doesn't have to worry about. So she went to work for Uber in the Netherlands. In the real world, world, things work somewhat differently. Working large foreign firms, busted debt, and many other means. In other words, she realized that she has to learn a lot about communicating. Tim Franovich, working as a programmer at Amazon, he says that he's delighted somebody decided to change this communication skills course he was listening to, because it is the most important skills for an engineer. Key aspects of engineer, ability to communicate or present ideas, and solutions to others. There will be time to talk about this, but you know, we have great ideas, we have problems, and then we have great solutions to problems. We are so happy. And we spend hours, sometimes days or weeks, thinking about it. And now we present our crazy idea how to solve something in a few sentences. And the other person well, is supposed to understand us. And we spend hours and days and weeks thinking about it. He didn't. How to do that? How to explain this in a few sentences in a few minutes? And he says, unfortunately, he has been witness to numerous presentations and lectures where it was painfully obvious that the engineer lacked said skills. They were boring. They were unclear. Nobody understood them. People fell asleep. You don't want this to happen to you. And if you need more convincing, this is a LinkedIn report how oral communications and uh, other things like business management, leadership are important 
um, more important and more people are sought uh, than, for instance, data science, data storage, computer networking, or graphic design. Now the question comes for you. What do you think that a communication skill is? Now you have your white boxes. Let me <coughs> Wow, this works. Let me hear from you. Put everything you think that a communication skill can encompass. This goes also to our international UNIC students. Please do give us your comments, your thoughts on what communication skills might all mean and encompass. Don't try to make definitions. Just be descriptive, simple, so that my mother can understand you. Body language, clear voice. You are tending to be so clever and give definitions. Give me just examples, situations, verbs. Is digging a hole communication skill? Is uh, drawing graffiti on the wall? Is this communication skill? Say, oh, this is the wrong answer. We give you points just for the answer. Any answer. You can't be stupid, you can't be wrong. Okay, I'll give you one more minute. Text messages, it's communication. Okay, to grab your audience with images, examples, yes. What else? 30 seconds. Twenty seconds. Ability to interact in a way that gains interest and focus on others. It's a matter of life or death in business. No investor potential factor was to waste time hearing unclear stuff. Right. Ability to understand other people, change our way of talking depending on that. Help us present our work. Connect with someone who wants to listen, or make him listen. To have knowledge to communicate with other people, listen, be active in conversation, share ideas in a clear and simple way for others to understand and be interested in the topic you are speaking about. Oh, you are so well educated, you want to give definitions. Give me examples. To speak clearly, read body language, understand the social situation. Most suitable way to make other person truly understand my idea. Ah, oh, we'll come to that. How to be sure that they truly understand you? Email, right. That's what I want to have. To be able to interest your audience while at the same time present your ideas. Is this a communication skill? Dance. I can see your hands. Yes or no? Yes? Is um, fighting, shouting, arguing, is this communication skill? Yes is um, taking out somebody for a dinner communication skill yeah. is cooking dinner for her parents or his parents communication skill is uh, the way you dress communication skill is um, shaking hands communication skill well actually all these are communication skills writing presentations of all sorts, taking pictures, making videos, talking, just, just merely speaking, 
presenting, giving a speech, a meeting, shaking hands or culture, fighting each other, courting each other, or even more. So all these are communication skills. We usually think of presentation, uh, presenting our work, a project, uh, everything is. OK, you basically answered the, my following question. Why does an engineer need communication skills? What for? And you basically answered them in this um, answers you gave. Uh, one thing is you need to find out what your client actually wants. You know, they would come and say, oh, I want um, a software that does this and that. And actually, he needs a piece of hardware or vice versa. Or he wants whatever, but when you backtrack, it turns out that they don't need it at all. So finding out what the client needs, or your boss, what they want you to do, actually. Recently, a person called me. I'm not skilled in, in Excel. A friend, can you help me? My boss told me to export all email addresses from Outlook into Excel. Turns out that the boss actually wants to have these addresses in, in their Outlook. Well, there are other ways to do that than exporting to Excel. Ta-da! So what does a person really want? Making agreement on what will be done. Saying what we expect. Delegating a job. Reporting finished task or project. Resolving a crisis situation. Convincing someone to cooperate. Securing financing and support resources of all sorts. Explaining an idea. Teaching and a number of things. These are all situations you as an engineer, future engineer, or, or a student of engineering will find yourself in, and you will need communication skills for. You also, in part, answered the question, what do engineers actually use to communicate? Somebody said email, social networks, for all so, so kind of fora. Blogs, home pages, write-ups, reports, tables, graphs, diagrams, photos, video, Audio conversation, cell phone, Skype, animations, blah, 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 blah. Teaching others, using schematics, blueprints, program code, computer graphics. Program code is also a communication skill. Unfortunately, I've seen too many program codes which nobody can read. And everybody says, oh, I'm going to write this from the scratch up because I can't read this code. I can't repair it. Writing program code is communicating with two entities. Who? When you write a program code, you're communicating with? I can't hear you. Users. OK, then three. With users, OK. But first, program code you write to in order to communicate with? Computer. computer. You're telling computer what to do. Then users and, Other and programmers. other programmers who will have to dig into your code one day. Yes. And we forget. Graphics, books, reviews, blah, blah, blah. Clothes, declarations, body language, awards, everything. OK. Now, what are we actually going to do? What are we going to learn? To much of your surprise, we are going to teach you how to use email. Who doesn't use email? Who does? Who believes that you know how to use email? No, a little bit hesitation. Who believes they don't know how to use the email? Who is not sure? Who says it's some trick <laughs> in my question? OK, we'll try to make sure. Maybe you know everything. Maybe you say, ah, oh, blah, what a stupid lecture. But we want to make sure that at the beginning of your education in this institution, you fully understand how to use email. Technically, communication-wise, and uh, on a higher point of communication, how to compose a decent uh, business letter or business email. We'll teach you how to use PowerPoint slides. You probably know how to do that. Again, we'll try to make sure that your PowerPoint slides, when I see them somewhere, I'm not ashamed. Did you teach them how to make? No, no, I didn't. No, I skipped the lecture. Uh, your resume, CV, curriculum vitae. We want you to be able to write it. And to much of your surprise, many of you might feel that 
you don't have much to write. I've been born and I've been studying. I finished the school. We will try to show you that there is a lot of things you can write about you, that people who want to employ you, give you some uh, financing, some, some awards, some scholarship, they want to know about you. Uh, including motivational lecture and cover letter, uh, motivational letter and cover letter. Uh, business communication, how to search information and uh, make sure that the information you receive is credible, is, is valid. How to do oral presentation, including a pitch, one minute, two minute elevator pitch to convince people, and you will be doing this in front of the whole room. How to speak and listen. You certainly know how to speak and know how to listen, but maybe you can improve this. We all can. I can. How to write. Popular text, technical text, and scientific text. What's the difference? On sidelines, you will also hear from us what is uh, actually engineering method and scientific method of going into projects. Uh, we will teach you how to make technically and compositionally correct photograph and video. How to do meetings, negotiations, how to resolve conflicts, and uh, we'll teach you something about cultural differences. And you, being here from different cultures, will help us in this. Okay, now comes the moment of truth. The question is... Somebody is fast. You're fast, both. Okay. Um, so, which engineers can make? Come on, come on, come on, come on. I need 13 votes in this room and few from abroad. If anybody is listening on YouTube. 11, I need a few more votes. As you see, these are very simple questions. Some questions, mostly those A, B, C, D questions, require from you to give correct answer. Correct doesn't mean that you agree with the answer. It means that you have heard what I think. Actually, you are supposed to answer what you think that I said a few slides ago. This is to see that you are really listening and not sleeping. And here we grade your correct answers. And when you use white boxes, we give you a point for just answering anything, unless it's offensive or uh, outraged. Somebody, some students post, for instance, those character graphics of Snoopy or Superman. They don't get grades for this. Well, a few people said only head and lead engineers. Um, it would be interesting to understand this. Uh, and I invite you to give comments why you think so. Okay. The core structure uh, before each lecture, you'll get some assignment uh, to get prepared. Usually, it wouldn't take you more than 20 to maximum 60 minutes to prepare. Usually, it's like 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes to read some text or watch some video and answer three very simple questions. Uh, this is you answering questions so that we know that you did it and we gave you credit, give you points for doing this. And the whole thing is intended, as I said, that you uh, start thinking about conflicts or start thinking about presentations or start thinking about negotiations or cultures, whatever. Then you have a lecture. We, as I explained it, grade your interaction with us through hours. Then, after some lectures, you get a homework to write um, a resume or to make a PowerPoint or to whatever. Uh, you get homework and it is you're going to upload it, you get instructions to Moodle and it gets graded. Some things are graded automatically, some things are graded by us, some most of the things are graded by you. You grade each other. And there is also a project. And I explain what the project is. These are the points that you collect during 12 weeks. Project, you are actually presenting everything you learned. In this course, it's a two-minute video on a, on a subject or an alternative. I'll explain shortly what it is. Um, midterm is uh, actually answering a questionnaire. You don't have to learn for the midterm. You are free from this course. You can concentrate on other courses to learn for the midterm. You don't have to learn for midterm. You will be answering uh, a questionnaire regarding some things that you are researching. 
Final written exam is a quiz, Moodle quiz. Very simple from the questions that are in these lectures. Uh, it's very straightforward. Uh, that's it. All this is written on the course website, so you can check it anytime. Grading, you can collect 100 points, 100 credits, and uh, you need only 90 for the best mark and only 60 for uh, passing the course. But in all these activities, you have to more than 50% 50, 50 or more points. So you can't say, oh, I have enough points, I don't want to do homeworks, or I don't want to come to four lectures because I'm doing all the homework, or I'll do a great project. Now you have to collect half of points from every category. Lectures. The purpose of this is discussion. I will try to motivate you. This is more unidirectional because it's introduction. But I will try to motivate you to talk to me. Especially in such a small group, it would be a shame that we don't <coughs> use ability to talk. To give me your examples, your problems, your ideas. Uh, also, talking to each other is very important. That you exchange your ideas. But not while I'm talking, but when I invite you to do so. Uh, you can answer by raising your hands, speaking when asked, or using ours. Anytime, write me a question or just raise your hand and say, I, I don't agree, whatever. And asking questions. It is very important that you are not just sitting here as a couch potatoes. You know, it's um, one o'clock, it's usually after lunch. Now all blood is here, you are sleepy. It's, uh, actually, it's good, it's Tuesday, it's not Friday. Some people have lectures on Friday, it's five here. It's very challenging for me to have their attention, their interactivity. Okay, uh, so use ours without delay. Um, you can use any um, device, vote, answers. I think I explained all of this. Uh, so you get those tasks, help you prepare. And I invite you always to think, how much do I know about emails? How much do I know about conflicts? Uh, what I need to know about conflicts or negotiations or cultures or photographs. I'm taking photos all the time, but I've been always wondering. Think about the questions you would like to have answers to. What questions do you have? And put them in written. Come to the lecture with a small piece of paper, or of course you're more people in your, your mobile phone. Put the questions you would like to get answers from for during the lecture. And don't leave unless you get the answers for me. Of course, I can say, I don't know. Gee, I don't know. Oh, that's OK. But you asked and tested my limits. Homework. This is where learning happens. When you do the homework, you actually apply what you've been learned, taught, what you've been taught, and hopefully you've learned in the lecture in homework. So the best thing is to do homework today, when you come home. We expect you to do this individually. There are things that we invite you to work in groups, but all our stuff is that we expect you to do individually. Peer review. Some of the homework we can grade. There is eight, oh, 680, 690 students in this course, and it's only Yuri and me. And every week, almost every week, there is a homework. We can't grade this. So most of the time, if a computer cannot do this, you are invited. You get five works from your five homeworks from your students, and a questionnaire, and you answer questions. I cannot stress this sufficiently. Be professional, serious, impartial when you do this. We check. We have tools that check inconsistency or favoring, favoring something or someone or trying to harm someone or something and we will punish this. I will give you an example. You get a video, a short video that you have to assess and there is a question, what is the quality of audio? Shameful, average, to be used as a good example. And you give the grade. And this video doesn't have audio at all. This means automatically you get zero points for this homework because you betrayed. You didn't behave professionally. Then students say, yeah, but I know, I know this student I've seen, he's 
video, it did have audio, it was great. I don't know why he didn't upload that version. I don't care. You got something to great. You understand what I'm talking about? Yes. You have to be professional. Some students said, why are we doing this? This is your job, it's not our job. Because the moment you graduate and start working, people will be asking you, what do you think about his work, uh, his proposal, uh, his presentation? What do you think about this contract? Can you take a look into what I'm doing? Can I improve it somewhere? People, bosses, colleagues, clients will ask your opinion. And you will have to do review most of the time of your peers. So it's not that you are doing our job, you are, because we can't do this for 680 students, but it is because you need to practice. And this is school, this is sandbox, where you practice. Okay, this is the threat. And then the project. It's individual task, you do it by yourself. It's a two minute video, integration of all course topics, you research a topic, then you tell a story. Use the video technology and video na narrative and the narration to present. It's a modern way, we hope you like it. And who is the audience? High school seniors, people you were six months ago. You are making this video for basically yourself. It has to be appealing, interesting, clear, useful to you. Not for me, not for scientific conference, not for general public, for young people like you, about the topic that comes across your way. You can choose the topic, but we don't allow two topics of the same sort. And everything you do will be publicly available with your name. So you can't come five years later and say, you know that video that we did in communication skills? Well, now I'm a respected professional in my company, and you know this video doesn't serve very well to me. Could you please remove it from the net? Yes, we can remove it jointly with your diploma. Yeah, sure. This is how you got your certificate, that you're an engineer. And you say, well, it's, it, it is shameful. OK, then you can't get a certificate. We also offer you alternative to this video. One, you can do community-based service learning. This is with our Institute for Development and Innovativity, those robots. Uh, they will come and present you their project, and you will be able to say, okay, I want to work on this. And they will tell you what. They need assignments, they need you to go to do lectures to kids, whatever. A lot of communications. You can do this. A limited number of students can, can get this. These are examples that uh, students were doing. Second thing, we invite you, you and I, two pairs of students, you work in pairs this time, to work on a, on a topic, to do a little research with us, and write a small scientific paper for a conference. And we pay you to go to the conference, to the seaside. Last week, two beautiful young uh, students, he and she beautifully presented. He was so good that he's as good presenter as me. She's equally good, but she was a little bit shy. So we need to put her in 10 more presentations to get rid of that shyness. Great, brilliant, greatly done. So um, you will be learning how to write a little scientific paper, how to research, you'll be working with us, do something useful and present it in front of people and enjoy a few days on a seaside. Maybe next year it will be in May, not in October, depending on COVID. And third thing that we offer you as a project alternative is that you can go to your previous school or to some other community and give them lecture on a topic they choose or you choose. Uh, something of about 30 minutes or more for the audience of 20 or more. Um, it can be a library, a school, company, uh, NGO, whatever. Uh, and the audience will get our grading sheets to grade your presentation. You have also to record this lecture, upload the recording of the lecture, and before that there's, uh, you get a certificate from the organizer that they will accept your lecture and they will do the lecture. So you can do a nice job. Again, maximum of 30 students can do this. 
Um, so everything, sorry. So everything will be available on the net, and you can communicate with us about um, how to do that. Final exam is written only. It's a shame. Communication skills should be actually a big moment of your triumph. You should be presenting in front of everybody else. But uh, we calculate it will take about two school years <laughs> so that you all do your presentations of two minutes or three minutes each. So we can't do it. Although there will be an exercise in pitching, in giving a pitch, short speech of two minutes, it work, goes like this. We put you in groups of five. You get a topic to work, to research on, and you prepare a pitch, your solution to the problem. Then you five come here. I look who has dirty shoes, and this person is going to with the dirtiest shoes or the cutest haircut or uh, the best matching colors of your suit or best matching colors to my suit, uh, this person uh, will be selected to present in front of the whole group, in, in, in the name of the whole group, and the whole group gets the same points. So you don't know who will be presenting, and you have to present in one or two minutes, present uh, the thing. Um, so one fifth of you, actually this small group can be more, maybe everybody. Twelve. Well, yeah, maybe yes. Okay, we'll think about it. Uh, everything is on the web. Go to the web page and learn everything. As I said, I just repeat this: how the grading goes. Don't forget that this rule says those who are listening an introductory lecture, if you achieve. 49% of a score and you need 50 to pass, you are not failing 1%, but rather, how much? Oh. How much? 51%. Oh. You are missing 51%. Don't come and say, oh, I'm just missing 1%, please. No, you're missing 51%. And don't try pleading to us. I miss 0.01 points. It's nothing. So why didn't you do it? It's nothing. We give you ample opportunities. Remember, you get 100 points and 90 is for the best mark. So there's 10 extra. Um, so everybody who is capable of, um, of attending the lecture in creation can come. We will have a, on Thursdays at 6. We will have not in this room, but in the other room, we have exercises. There's few exercises throughout the course. Uh, you don't have to prepare them. You just come and play. We do various communication skill exercises. And you can get points for this. Extra 10 points. So it's 110 points if you want. OK. So what would you say for this question? Two more. Okay. Um, yeah. All this information is on the course website. You should be automatically subscribed to the news that we send for the course. Check whether this is true. Uh, our computer department has big, big load now because they have to support the old studying program and the new studying program, and uh, it, it sometimes does have glitches, so be careful, check that you are subscribed. Also, also use, um, uh, everything will be also on Moodle, all your uh, homework, preparations, etc. Um, 
deadlines will be explained and will not be extended. Don't send emails pleading for deadlines. We can't support it because most of the things are, are mutually graded and then we cannot, we, we simply can't change this or just open it for you. Simply technically it's, it's impossible. Uh, even if we were not so cold-hearted. Uh, email notifications, enable them, etc. Now I assume that's I'm assuming that all of you have an email address like this one. Is there anyone who doesn't? For international students or unique, I uh, encourage you to send us email, say, uh, giving you email address so that we can put you in communication loop somehow. We won't use your Gmail or other addresses. You can make forwarding if this pleases you. Everything uh, that you need to communicate to us, please use this email address. These are our personal email addresses. If you want, if you fell in love and you need advice from me, you can send me a message to, to this address. If you uh, have a wonderful idea how I can earn a million dollars, you can send me email address on this uh, email message on this address. But anything connected with this course, send here. If sent here, we probably won't see it, we probably won't answer it. I get about 200 emails here. And everything that's co connected with, with the courses, I, I simply ignore. Here is the address for the courses. Um, that's basically what I had to say in the introduction. Unfortunately, I talk too much, and now we have only five minutes for your physical needs. Go out, stretch, breathe, uh, visit the bathroom, make a phone call, and be back in five minutes uh, for the continuation for the next lecture in this course. Sure. I, I wasn't supposed to be there, but... Uh, you were not? I wasn't supposed to be there, but um, my crew, uh, one of my crews were deleted, so I went into there just to see uh, if I were interested. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I will go uh, go to see another cruise now. Okay. So, just to inform you. Yeah, me. sure. Choose whatever you want. Yeah. Maybe see you... Maybe. Maybe, yes. Thanks. Maybe, no. No problem.
yeah, that's like, yeah, this one. Yeah. So it's your initials and then it's like some numbers of your student ID. Yes. And uh, for me, just the last number is missing here. But yeah, I, I don't know why the normal one. Close the window because of noise. Okay, the first video lecture is how to learn. Well, again, seems uh, unnecessary and stupid because you've been learning for like 12 years and more, and uh, you know how to learn, right? No? You don't? Okay, uh, okay, let's let's test this. Uh, write me, but in very short, don't write me essays. In a few words, one word, two words, three words. What didn't you like about your learning so far? Not the way that you've been taught, but the way you've learned. What, what didn't you like? What you are missing? What would you like to learn about learning, if anything? I'm eager to know this. Too much useless information, okay, that was given to you. Unimportant information was given to you. You didn't like philosophy. Losing focus. Ah, take a break after how much learning? Oh, I have some very wicked answer to this. It was boring. You want to be more productive. How to make it fun? Uninvolved teachers. Definitions, you didn't like definitions. I don't like them too. I never give definitions. <coughs> Not enough attention to more important areas. What would you like to know about your learning? What would somebody want to be more efficient? Okay? How to make it fun? When to stop? How too much how much studying is too much? This doesn't exist. It's only you don't have enough time for this. Okay? Good. Now, <clears throat> keep writing. Okay, to learn or to be taught. I don't know how is it in places you are coming from, but in this country, based on my humble experience, we all expect to be taught. Which means, I lay down, <clears throat> lean in my chair, and let me see what you will be able to teach me. Nothing can happen from this. This attitude will bring you nowhere. Absolutely no, nowhere. Because I'm waiting to be taught. It's your teacher's effort to do something to my brain. Well, what we would like to do is, and this is called passive learning. Passive learning is, I'm telling you and you are supposed to either write it down or repeat it later and that's it. Definitions. Active learning is where you find your knowledge. Now, I have a question for you. If you go to Google, okay, 
What do you do? You sit in front of your hand, mobile phone or computer and wait that something appears on the screen or you have to do something. What do you need to do? You have to type something in, which is basically a assignment task or 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 when you take a book, many times you just browse or start reading from page one and two. We didn't formulate a task. We didn't put down anything. We just browse. When you come to the lecture, we sit and wait. What this magician will now do to my brain? We don't treat Google like that. You know, don't wait for Google. You ask him something. The only way to learn something really is that you want to learn it. Philosophy, history, Latin, statistics, laws. Give me some more boring topics. Teacher is the person who can only help you in this process. Yes, I can guide you. I can tell you what I think is important, what is less. I can help you uh, resolve some problems you have in your understanding. But it's not my job to teach you, it's your job to learn. And this applies to every learning, this applies to every school, this applies to every course in this school, this applies to this course as well. If your attitude is, I don't need this course, I just want to go as quickly through it and, and get a passing mark and, and I don't want to spend too much time, it's okay, you're entitled to it. But this is how much you will learn. And you cannot blame anybody else. Yes, I can be demotivated. I can be boring. I can be boring as hell. I can talk about things that are not important at all. I can talk about things that you believe that are not important to you. Yes, that's not true. I can be a bad teacher. Yes. But even if I'm the best teacher in the world, you won't learn anything unless you want to learn. And there will be, I, I'm, I'm sure, courses in this five-year program that you enrolled in that will be boring or unimportant to you or t difficult to understand. But it's up to you to try to figure out how to do that. With better teachers, it will be easier. Remember the teacher is supposed to help you. We are directing your attentions, answering to your questions. We are selecting the assignments we believe are most efficient for you to gain the knowledge, not to spend too much time and not to be too difficult and to measure your progress, to tell you how well are you doing in this. But initiative activities management of learning is in your hands. When you learn, how much you learn, what you do. It's in your hands. Now, let's go back to, to Google. You said, uh, I'm formulating a task, uh, assignment, a task. What do actually do you type into Google search box? Actually, it is a question. question. And believe me, every learning journey, every learning starts with a question in your head. I know that many of you have not been taught that way. Oh, we have history today. I'll come to the history class, lecture. Let's see what we we'll, are. Uh, today we'll learn about French wars. OK. I know basically. 99% of your arguments against my advice to tell you, why don't you go into program, why don't you go into book and say, oh, tomorrow we have a French wars. Okay, what would you like to know about them? And you take a notebook and put down one, two, three, five, 55 questions about French wars. And then you come to the lecture to learn about answers to your questions. I know almost all answers your comments against this. Oh, I don't have time. I don't know what to ask about. I don't have interest, blah, blah, blah. But the only way to really have fun, this 45 or 90 minutes to be useful to you, is that you come here with questions and that you don't leave until I answer them. As I said, I can say, no, I, listen, I don't know the answer. That's okay. But I'm not allowed to say, I don't want to give you an answer. 
or that's not the relevant question, or this is not a question for now. I can tell you, look, I don't have time now, can you meet in the ha hallway, or write me an email, or come to my, my office later. But don't let me go out of the classroom, or leave you in the corridor, without giving you answer to your question that you came with to my lecture. I know it's difficult. I know that you have, most of you have never been doing this. It's a novel way of thinking. And it seems, oh, does that mean that I have to do even more? I have to prepare for the lecture. Yes. Every learning begins with a question. The question can be, why do I have to take this course? What is this topic all about? Don't I know everything about learning or email or cultures or? You are entitled to have very generic question. Why do I have to learn this? What's in it for me? That's a very good question. But you have to have some question. You don't have to have very smart questions, very detailed questions. You have to have a question. A question that you really want to find answer to. So when somebody meets you on a bus station outside, on the street, and says, where have you been? Oh, I've been in a university. I had a lecture. What was it about? It was about learning. And uh, what did you learn? you have to be able to give an answer that you feel well with. You know what I mean? OK. Now that you have started with a question, what do you have to do? Now you have a question in your head. What is the next thing you have to do? It's very simple. And you never do it. What do you have to do with the question? Before coming to the lecture? Before sitting and typing into Google, you would actually have to, before opening the book, you would have to think about it, think about it and Get to work. write it down. Put your question on a paper. And when you get the answer, write it down. On the next slide, I'll explain why. And then think, what is your next question? Because in Google, are you always satisfied with the first answer that, answer that pops up? No, what do you do? You read the second, the third, and then what you do, you rephrase the question, right? Until you are satisfied. Do this in reading the book or sitting in a lecture. Sorry, but I'm not quite satisfied with the answer. I'm not quite sure that I understand it. Don't give up. I know it's intimidating, in a, especially there on Thursday. 250 students in a room, and you are the only one who says, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Everybody else is quiet. It's quite intimidating to say, I don't understand, because everybody else understands, right? Wrong. <laughs> everybody else doesn't want to ask the question. It's not brave enough. Because most of the time, what you don't understand, they don't understand either. either. So this is the continuous circle. Have a question, put it down, get the answer and rephrase until you're satisfied, put it down. OK, now that I understand this concept, what's my next question? And this is called learning. Learning is a very simple exercise. Question, answer, question, answer, question, answer. That's it. Sounds simple, it is simple. Why don't you do it? Because you haven't been taught like this. Because it seems complicated. How can I think of something? Hey, all the time I get the answers from all people, old people, young people, but I don't know anything about history. How can I ask a question? Well, unless you have a question, you can get the answer. And, or any answer is good enough. Now, why do I have to write it down? Because we think, OK, when I get the answer, then I know. I will know forever. I'll remember. I have an argument against this. Have you ever been in a situation that somebody is telling jokes, great jokes? You're laughing all the time. You are hurting of the laugh. Have you been in this situation? Then you come home and you want to tell these jokes. How many jokes do you remember? Half the joke. Half? Oh, Jesus, you are really talented. <laughs> I remember one or two. If. Ah, half of a joke. Half of a joke. <laughs> ah, half of a joke. Okay, what, what I want to say, 
Is it entertaining? Is it fun? Yes. Do you want to hear jokes? Yes. Do you want to tell jokes? Yes. And you can't remember them. How come? So why would you believe that what you have, and while the joke has been told, you understand it, and you laugh, and it's nice. So why would you believe, what gives you the reason to believe that what you will learn here today, you don't have to write down. You can just sit. Or you go out forward and write it in the phone. You can just sit and listen, and when you come home, you will know everything I taught you in this lecture. Think about it. Unless you write down, you won't learn anything. It will evaporate like a magic trick. Vanish in a thin air, magicians would say. You don't. Human memory system has a very little space for new just learned things. And it forgets. We change memories. We remember things the way they did, actually were not. And the uh, thing that people invented are these two. Great technology. You write it down. Of course you can use a mobile phone, you can put it in your mobile phone. Regardless of what technology you use, but externalize it. Put it somewhere else, not in your brain. And now I have a question for you. Why do we have to write it down? What do we have to write down? Come on. Give. What do you have to write down? Question, what else? When I need to remember something later, so I can just read it again. What you want to remember? What else you need to write? Everything. Well, this is a good answer, but it's a little bit complicated to put into, into action. You know, what means everything? Everything that I think is important. Is important. Ah, what you think that is important. What do you think you need to write? Stuff I need to complete. Stuff you need to complete. What you would write down? Um, short notes. Notes? What you would write down? Connections, links. Uh -huh. You see, when you don't answer the first one, then the number of answers that they've given is limiting this your space. Now you have problems understanding what you would put right now. But I'm certain that you can remember, that you can fi figure out. What, what else can, can you write down? Answers, questions, links, what's important, what I need to know, notes, what else? Schedule for the day, okay. The answer to your questions. Answers to my questions. Uh, some organizational stuff. Organizational stuff. Uh, sources, sources that I have used. Sources. That have sources. Used. No, yes. To learn more or clarify. Well, let's say if he didn't give you the answer to something, and, uh, or if he didn't answer something uh, that satisfied you. Further questions, unanswered questions. Do you have an idea? Calendar. Calendar, okay. What I suggest is, okay, he's been talking about this and this. Okay, I already knew that, but I kind of forgot it. Now he reminded me. Why don't you put this down? He reminded me that this and this can be done that way where it's important. I didn't think like that before. He changed my mind. Or I disagree with him. Put it down. What do you think that was right? Oh, this is new to me. Or new way of thinking. And I think it's important. Put it down. What you still don't understand. What you still don't understand or hasn't been answered. Or new questions I have now. These are the things. Use these four bullet points as your guide, put it in front of you during the lectures and put it down. And all your thinking about it, including calendar schedules, whatever. Why do we have to write it down? First of all, teachers who say, oh, I don't give you my PowerPoint slides, you have to write down everything from the blackboard because writing down will make you remember they are wrong. Scientific research has shown it's wrong. It's completely wrong. It actually distracts you. Therefore, before every lecture that I give you, you go to the web page, there is, there is PDF with all my PowerPoint slides. You don't have to put down anything. If you can, print them out and write on the margins. Write there your thoughts. Interpretation of you just learned. Your interpretation. 
your thinking, your conclusions and questions, your new ideas. Not what I said, but your thoughts. Put them down, because you will forget. And they are valuable, very valuable. Those things that you put, that, that you write on the margins, actually we give you the form with, with three slides and the lines here so that you can write more text. What you write down on the margins of PowerPoint is your knowledge. Oh, I can use it, I can't use it because of that. Oh, I need to tell this to Anna or my friend Fred actually needs to hear this, or that was the mistake I made then, or I have to remember this for the next few project. Put this thought. I know again that you are not used to do that, but do it, listen to me. Everything is somebody said what I want to remember, put it down. Why we have this? Have a hard copy to help us to recall. When we misplace the knowledge, This is why we have to do this. Because when we write, it is not only that we will have it written and we want to forget it. Because when we write it, when we write the interpretation, we rephrase it. Some people like to draw. Some people make mind maps. Some people make tables, trees, or simply icons. Some people write it in bullets. Some people make little essays. Some people even write lyrics. Because the, when you reinterpret what I said in the other words, then your brain is doing a process in which you actually better understand and longer remember. And that has been scientifically proven. Third mistake we make is, OK, now I understand, now I know. Oh, he explained it to me. Oh, now I know how to do Pythagoras or how to invert matrix or whatever. Oh, now I know. A colleague of mine, a mathematician, his daughter went to study here and she couldn't pass math exam. And he asked her, okay, how are you studying? Well, I've gone through all the assignments and uh, that's it. But I don't see that you've been solving any of them on a paper. Yeah, she says, I know how to solve this one. Okay, you know, but did you solve it? No, I know how to solve it. I don't need to, to do the exercise. And then she goes to exam and she fails. Because she believed that just understanding how to solve things is sufficient. How wrong is it we can uh, explain on an on example of playing a piano? Just knowing how to read the notes and knowing how it sounds when some famous uh, artist is performing this music doesn't mean that you can play it, right? You have to play. You have to solve mathematical equations. You have to apply these learning things into your learning. You have to apply the cultural things in your relations with other people. You have to apply writing your resume by writing it for a real case, or at least for a school exercise. So exercising is, there is no replace, replacement for exercising. Just understanding it and knowing doesn't mean you can do it in practice. You have to play. So many assignments and different assignments. Those who understand creation, I invite them to come to the lecture that follows this one uh, next week. Uh, because it's called Technologies of E-Learning. And I'm, uh, next week I'm going to talk about theories of learning. Explaining how memory system works how things in our brain function when we are learning something. In very, very fluent, I hope, in a very fluent and simple way, an applicable way I'm trying to explain this. It's a tent for those who teach, but also it's useful for those who learn. And then you will understand what means, what happens in our brain when we solve many similar assignments, and what happens when we solve in the same topic but different assignments, varying assignments. You know. Um, applying what we've learned in practice is actually it creates the knowledge. We can discuss, we can discuss with other people specific applications, limitations, where it leads, who else needs this knowledge. Discussing with your peers, with your teachers, also helps you understand. 
So solving assignments, applying, and discussing is actually learning. Understanding, aha, now I know how to do that, is just buying a ticket. You just bought a ticket. But to have the ride of your life, you need to get on this roller coaster. You have to take this shovel in your hand. By understanding, you just bought the ticket to get the shovel. But now you have to dig. Or hammer and nails. Now you have to smash to hit the nails with a hammer. You have to do it to be able to use nail and hammer. Just understanding buys you a ticket. Doesn't give you the knowledge. You have to practice. Practice and practice. Because practice makes perfect. And finally, my advice how to learn. After every learning episode, which means I've been browsing through Google some time on some topic, or I've been reading a chapter or a page of a textbook, or I've sat 45 minutes in a lecture. After each learning episode, you happily go away. Wrong. I again want to convince you to do more effort in order to learn what actually is necessary to be done is to think, summarize and write down what I have learned. In order to do that, I'm giving you some instructions. First, as I said before, what you already know, oh, I knew that, but somehow I forgot that I didn't realize that it's important. But I think now I think it's, it's worth reminding myself. I'll write it down. Next, I have thought completely differently, and now I change my mind, or he cannot change my mind. I disagree. I disagree. Third, OK, new and very important stuff is this. Maybe nothing, but put it down. Nothing important. And finally, what is still not clear? Sometimes you will have all four rubrics. Sometimes you will have just one or two. But these are four questions you should ask yourself and put it down in written. No, I knew nothing about. No, I didn't have anything differently and I, don't, I agree with everything. No, there is nothing important. And no, I don't have any questions. Well, if you give these four answers, you probably didn't learn anything from the lecture. Regardless how fun it was, how interesting it was, you should probably have answered to at least one of these questions uh, that means that you have really gained something in a, in a sense of learning. Uh, I stole this idea from um, a guy called Walt Hopkins uh, who is um, uh, an international consultant on project management and personal communication skills and uh, he calls it a learning journal. I don't know where he got it from. I a little bit adopted it but Basically, this is it. Learning journal. After the lecture, at the end of the lecture, sit down and say, okay, go through these four questions. Good. After Googling some time, you want to buy a used car. After the session of Googling, go through these four questions, put it down. You took the textbook, read the chapter or three pages, put it down. It helps. Next time you take it again, you want to continue learning, go through your notes, Aha! Uh -huh. The whole chapter you refresh in four bullets. It doesn't have to be long. It's not a journal of 15 pages. It's just uh, like this. Half a page, four rows, one row, nothing at all. Saying no, 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 no also means something. Oh, geez. Either I didn't do my good job, or the material, or the lecture wasn't good, wasn't appropriate for me. So,
Are we so far? One more answer? Uh -huh. One suit left? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Next question is this one. And then the next question. Two more, please. Okay. <clears throat> My advice to you how to good organize yourself during study. Again, you might wave your hand and say, oh, that's too complicated. Uh, I'll give you uh, an anecdote. My daughter, she is uh, now 27. She's a psychologist. Uh, while in the um, last year of high school, she discovered by herself something I was telling her about three years before. She decided that as soon as at the beginning of school year there is some amount of, of new knowledge, she would raise her hand and say, please, can you examine me next time? And uh, most of the time the teacher said yes because they like uh, getting rid of uh, examining students as fast as possible. So the other students look at her, frown, and say, what are you doing? Are you streber? What a nerd? What are you doing? And then at the midterm, they, they started understanding what she's doing. Uh, she, they understood that actually she's organizing herself, because this is the knowledge she has to answer. It's not too much. She'll be answering, and she won't be asked that subject for the next few weeks. So she can cost her another subject. So she is controlling when she is answering and what. But when they realized it was too late because they had a backlog of things they didn't uh, answer, didn't do exam. Well, the same is with this. It sounds, it might sound to you, ah, uh, I can't do that. I don't have enough time. I don't have motivation. But I strongly believe this is a good way to organize yourself prepare for every lecture. Even if there is no preparatory assignment, go and see what will be the next lecture about. Oh, matrices. OK. What will we be learning? Read it. You won't understand it. That's OK. But look at it. Are there any questions? What is this sign for? Why do you do that? When to use this? Write all kinds of questions there. They, they, are, they are asking for some previous knowledge. I don't recall that I'm learning that. Compose your own questions and put it down. So you come to the lecture. So when you see some signs on the, on the board, you know what sign this sign is. Because some teachers don't write properly, but you will realize new Greek 
alphabet letter or something, you will be able to say, okay, when he comes up and repeats what's in a textbook, then you say, sorry, but I don't understand this. Because if you don't prepare and he says something you don't understand, you start thinking, start looking, browsing, and when you have a question, he's already gone to some other part of the lecture. If you prepare in advance, it doesn't take very long. Just browse through it, look at, the, what, at this. Put, put down a few questions, basic questions that you have reading this text. You don't have to study it thoroughly for hours. It won't take you more than 10 to 20, maybe 30 minutes if it's very interesting and you know a lot about it. Now you come to the lecture. Seek answers to those questions. Ask. Don't be afraid to be stupid. Don't be afraid from other students to be called nerds or trying to become teacher's pets and, f and, and uh, you know, favorites because you're asking so many questions and sitting in the first row. Sit in the first row because you see better, hear better, are heard better. You came here to learn. Don't sit in the last row. Never. Whatever teachers ask, oh, I don't know. I don't know how to put a question. As I said, I know in Croatia especially, um, we are not used to ask questions or give our opinions, and we always need to be right. Many teachers instilled in this culture that if you don't have the correct answer, then sit down. Who has the correct answer? I'm trying to teach teachers that the wrong answers are the most important thing in the class, because we can discuss why is this wrong. People don't really learn by mistakes. Look, if you ate some good dish, pizza or sweets, if you like cookies, I adore cookies, making cookies, eating cookies, um, and you say, oh, this is excellent, give me a recipe. You get a recipe, you go home, you make these pancakes or, or tart or, or cake, and it's excellent. Will you ever sit down and think, why was it so good? Why did I succeed from the first moment? Will you ever think about it? But if it tastes like, you know what, awful, it's wrong, it's, it's burned, it's, 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 it's unedible, it's high chance that you will sit down and think, what did I do wrong? And try to figure out what makes it sweet, what makes it white, what makes it, we really do learn by mistakes. Now, if you come from the culture where you were not asked to, you might have asked questions when you were punished or ridiculed for not giving uh, good answers. At least in my class, this won't happen. Exercise here. Ask all sorts of questions. Make comments. Because this helps you and me. And after the lecture, summarize. I gave you four bullet points. Summarize uh, against these four bullet points. Do this after the lecture, every lecture. So if you read the lecture, just skim through the lecture and write a few questions. Try to get answers to these questions. And summarize after the lecture, only this, and it won't take you much time. Summarizing is five minutes stop. Five minutes, three to five minutes, nothing. This is 15, 20 minutes. And this is just activity. Are you going to sit and sleep or are you going to be active? So you don't actually need so much time. And try to do this. I am convinced that you will be convinced that it really works. Try it. Of course, there is a problem if you try to do it in the middle of the semester. When there is so much things that you didn't understand previously, you lose uh, motivation because you don't understand basically anything he's talking about. I'm talking about math, physics, electrical engineering. And try to solve problems, discuss. As many problems as you can, discuss. If you can't solve the problem, go to the teacher, ask him how to solve this. Ask all the students. Go to the web. Seek answers immediately. Don't wait exam on some, oh, I don't understand this. OK, I'll, I'll, I'll go into it. I'll investigate when I'm studying for exam. Don't do that. It's too late then. Too many things, too complicated. Constantly check your knowledge. Assignments, exercise, application, online, if available, discussion with colleagues, constantly check your knowledge. And something more. Um, 
when you recognize, you know, there's a lecture and the guy is mentioning something. Repensation. What's that? Go immediately find out what it is. Repensing. What's that? Immediately. Don't wait. Immediately fix the gap. Because you want, again, theories of learning will show you that you, you are not able to connect new knowledge in your brain without fixing the gap. OK, you are in English class, so this is superfluous instruction. Um, if English is your mother tongue, then uh, learn, listen, talk, write in some other language. Using other language helps a lot. Be a host for your students. Apply what you learn. Teach other students. Show them. You know, I don't know if you experienced this, if you ever gave math lessons to some younger students or something. If you ever taught somebody, you really learn by teaching others. Really. You really clarify things in your brain. Teach others. Give instructions. Participate in projects. Uh, go to internships. Go to exchange programs. Erasmus is a great exchange program. People benefit from it. Do all of this. Some students asked me, so I added this slide, about learning techniques. For instance, fast reading. I don't think that it can be very suitable for math formulas, that you can read fast read a textbook full of formulas. If you're learning history or maybe communication skills, fast reading can help you skim through the text, quickly grasp the idea. But in engineering, there is very little things that we can use for fast reading. But um, I, I'm not expert, and um, maybe you can convince me otherwise. Um, then there are memori memorizing techniques. Uh, yes, uh, some people use tables, concept maps, decision trees, mind maps, um, all sorts of other ways to structure the information, to structure the knowledge. Yes, it's useful. Use them. Whatever pleases you. For instance, the daughter I mentioned uh, finds this very confusing. What she did during her studying, rather, is he was writing text. He was writing, rewriting the textbook, or what she learned in, in a, or her notes in a, in a class, she was rewriting it in the other way. That's the way she learns. That helped her. All kind of uh, graphical engineering presentations actually distract her, and she doesn't get anything from it. So it's personal. Diagrams. Anything. Don't let anyone convince you. You know, if you want to be a good learner, you have to use mind maps. You know, if you want to be a good programmer, you have to use meta language. You know, if you want to be, you have to use, don't buy it. You try, give everything a chance. Try this, try that. Try it second time, try it third time. And then decide. Does it feel good? Does it help you? Don't do anything that doesn't help you. We are different. We are individual. Rephrase. Tell it, draw it, or whatever. Uh, express it in other way than it was in a textbook or in a lecture. Apply, 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 and apply. And then explain it to someone. Grab somebody on a bus station, your, your family at home, and explain them these differential equations because they are dying to learn about it. Explain it to others. Or make a video vlog or whatever. So I hope that I managed to undermine your idea that you are supposed to be taught and try to plant you the idea that you need to learn by yourself actively. That um, there might be some benefit for you if you would try to seek a question before every lecture and write them down. That practicing, applying, discussing is very important. That this resume, this uh, conclusion, this uh, learning journal might be a useful tool for you. That you never stop checking your knowledge. Do I understand? Do I really understand? By explaining others, by solving problems, by applying the knowledge. And um, that uh, you know, many students, in general population, they think, oh, this, this, this faculty is very difficult. Only geniuses go there. 
by mere fact that you are studying at fair makes you a little superhero in the local community. Oh, she's from fair. Wow. She must be a genius. They think we have mouth in our little finger. And then people come here and they have problems and they feel, oh, I'm not good enough. I'm teaching 30 something years. I studied 40 something years ago. And uh, my strong conviction is that it's only a matter of organization. Everybody who enrolled here has mental capacity to successfully graduate. It's only the question of organization, of your time, of your efforts, focusing, seeking help, especially males. We are trained not to seek help. Die, but never ask for direction on the road. Because it's, you know, it's for sissies. It's not manly enough to ask for help or for, for assistance. Ask for help immediately when something's wrong. Use other people's knowledge and time to help you save your time and your stress. Immediately when you don't understand, ask your colleagues. If they don't know, go to the teacher. If they don't know, go to the web. If they don't know, go, go, go. Ask. Don't waste your time. When you see that you are stuck, you know, I'm learning, I'm reading this textbook, but I don't, I, I'm watching this lecture, but I still don't understand anything. Seek help. By the way, the faculty has also the uh, Department for Psychological Help for Students. Don't be ashamed, go there and say, hey, I've lost motivation. Hey, i am uh, spending too much time on computer games. Hey, I fell in love, I can't think of anything but her. Uh, go there and seek help. Don't try to solve things longer than a few minutes. If you can't, Seek help. Somebody's stupid idea might help you. Uh, I'm con positively con convinced that everybody sitting in this room and abroad can can do this, uh, can graduate here uh, without too much stress. Enjoy. <laughs> Uh, lecture is over. If anybody has any questions of any sort, uh, I'm still here.